This afternoon, I'm going to be making pea pod soup and canning it. Welcome to Urban Prepping with Pam. I'm Pam. Yesterday's pea pods are right here. That's two and a half gallon bag. So what I'm going to do, and I've made the soup before, is I'm going to wash these pea pods, put them in a pan, and I'm going to fill the pan just to cover them with water and let them simmer for about an hour. At that time, then I'm gonna put it through a food processor and then through a sieve to get all those bits and pieces that just aren't gonna break down, get them out of the soup. I'm gonna make mine a little on the thinner side because when it comes to a pureeing food, there are not very many foods that you can puree. It would be like, um, you can't puree pumpkin. You have to cut it in pieces when you can it because the, the, the issue is when you process it, the heat can't get to the, the food in the middle of the jar because it's too thick. I just wanted you to see that um, these pea pods filled that pan. And I've got water near the top. So I'm gonna put a lid on it and hopefully they'll cook down a little bit. It's uh, pretty much overflowing, but that's, I don't wanna waste it. That's what we're gonna be working with. Pea pods are all cooked. I let them cook for two hours. They're nice and soft. I've got my food processor. I have a food mill and underneath the food mill, I have a pan. To the food mill. When you're using a food mill, make sure you scrape the bottom because that's where all the good stuff's at. A lot left over. This will go into the compost. This is the pea soup. And it's thin. Hi there, I'm back. It's the next day. It was getting late last night. I was very tired and had to get ready for work today. So where I last left you, I was putting the pea pods in the food processor and then putting all of that mush through the food mill or sieve. So right now, the pea soup, which I had in the refrigerator overnight, is now on the stove heating up. So what I do is I wash my jars, put them in a dry canner, put water in the canner about two to three inches, and then turn the flame on so that the jars slowly get hot. This way, when I'm ready to can the soup, the jars are already hot and I don't have to worry about putting hot liquid in cold jars, which would cause the jars to break. I just don't have enough vegetables um, to triple the recipe that's in the book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop all my vegetables up, put them in a big container and mix them up. And then I'm just going to distribute that evenly in seven jars. I don't know how much that's going to give me. We'll find out when I do it. When you're following a canning recipe for soup, you have a lot of leeway. So you can use your favorite vegetables, but there are some rules. And the rules are that you cannot use any milk products. So no cheese, no cream, no milk. So if you want a cream soup, can it without the cream and then add your cream to it at the time that you're gonna get ready to serve it. So no, uh, no milk products, no pasta, no rice. Beans are okay, but beans have their own rules. And we're not gonna talk about that today because I'm not using them. So um, all I really is in this uh, soup are vegetables. Even the broth is a vegetable broth. I made it from pea pods. There are not very many recipes out there for pea pod soup. If you look on YouTube, there's just a few and they don't talk about canning it at all. So I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here, but I'm substituting the split peas for my pea broth. And I've added uh, some salt, some canning salt. I use canning salt when I'm um, canning because I don't want 
a regular salt that has iodine in it is going to discolor your food. So I don't want my soup to be discolored. So I used canning salt and I have um, these packets of dried bone broth, which I've added to the broth also, just to give it some flavor. I'm not going to worry about putting spices in it. I, I'm not, I can do that at the time that I'm serving. And I can thicken up the soup if I want to put cream in it. I can do that at the time, but I probably will add potatoes. I have um, I have dried potatoes that I've dehydrated. I can put that in there. Um, I can put all the spices I want in there. I can add other dried vegetables that I have, like mushrooms or whatnot. And then I can use um, a stick blender and make my own cream soup at the time. So I'm just going to get this canned, and then when I open it to serve it. I'll doctor it up and, and do what I want with it um, to make it the way we like it. So I'll be back uh, when I'm ready to start filling these jars. Okay, I'm back. It's time to jar the soup. And I'm going to put a couple of pieces of dehydrated garlic in the bottom of my jar. And then these are my chopped vegetables. I'm just going to evenly distribute them into the jars. You can fill your jar halfway up with vegetables when making soup. See now, I'm nowhere near to half a jar here, but this is all that I had. Time to fill these jars. And as you can see, the soup is very thin, so it's almost like a pea broth. And I'm not sure I'll be able to fill seven jars. Okay, so I'm not going to get seven jars out of this. I don't even think I'm going to get six. I think I'm going to get five. I would have had more, but I don't have enough vegetables. This is what I had in my fridge. And you want to bring it, it's a one inch head space. One inch head space would be right to this bottom thread. And headspace is important, so make sure you measure. I will wipe my rims with vinegar water, with vinegar and water. Yeah. In case I spilled anything on the rims, I want to get a good seal. So you make sure your rims are clean. But this isn't bad. I mean, in years past, I always threw away the pea pods. And now look, I've got five meals. with something I would have just thrown away. And it's delicious. Now these go on the canner. My canner has already been oiled. With the All-American, you have to put some oil around the rim here so because there's no gasket. Make sure the lid isn't tilted in one direction more than the other, you know, off balance like this. You want to make sure you get a good seal. This looks good just the way I did it. Hopefully it doesn't move. And then you screw it in. There are six screws here. You do opposite ends together. Check them, make sure they're not too tight. 
My book says to process split pre pea soup 75 minutes uh, if I have quarts or yeah, quarts, which is what I have. But I've seen some other extension service recipes online say 90 minutes. So to be safe, I'm gonna process these 90 minutes. The canner is now venting. I don't know if you can see this. So if I put something behind it, I don't know if you can see that steam coming out. But once the steam's coming out, I'm gonna let it vent for 10 minutes and then I'll be back to put the weight on. The canner's been venting for 10 minutes. So I've got my weight. I put it on a fork so I don't burn myself and I've got it set at 10 pounds. So you have to know what the sea level is for your area. Um, you might need to use 10 pounds, 15 pounds, but mine's 10 where I live. And so I'm gonna put this on, that's it. Okay, you can see that the weight is now jiggling. And if I look at my, my gauge here, it's exactly 10 pounds. So you might have to do a little adjusting on your stove because they say to have it do this and pause, do this about four times a minute. I'm gonna admit mine does it more than four times a minute. I can never get it down that low, but this is what you wanna see. Just like that. So now that it's at pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for 90 minutes and then I'll be back. The timer just went off. So I just turned down the flame and what I'm gonna do is let the pressure go down to zero. Um, the gauge will tell me when the pressure's down to zero and then I'll be ready to open up and take out my jars. The pressure is down, so now it's time to take the lid off the pot. Open the lid away from your face. Now one of the things that you will see when you're canning um, split pea soup, or in this case, pea pod soup, is there will be a separation because the pea material is heavier than water. And so you'll see it's, it's settling down here at the bottom. So, um, and right now the vegetables are floating, but they may sink. And what will probably happen is there will be a layer of water at the top that's fine there's nothing wrong with it they're sealing um but you might get some settling not a problem when you go to cook it it's going to be delicious and you know if you make enough soup to have a supply um then even you know we always try to can for a year and this way when a year comes around we've used up our food but now we're we're adding to that again. So we always have a supply of food. If there were an emergency, we don't have to worry. We've got plenty, plenty of meals, um, plenty of meat, plenty of vegetables. Um, now I have to start working on fruit. So that'll be the next thing. But thank you for joining me and we'll be back again very soon. Have a nice day.